the pairings, uh, it's early still, obviously, into a new season here in a short camp. But a lot, I think a lot of people thought we might see Dylan DeMello back with you. Uh, but it's Tucker Pullman, someone that you're obviously very familiar with. Uh, what's your take, I guess, on, on who you're skating with at this point in the season? Yeah, happy new year to you too, Mike. Um, I think obviously uh, we're trying all kinds of different pairings right now. Um, you know, from talking to Paul and, and uh, Charlie, try to get a little bit of, uh, you know, familiarity amongst uh, the different pairings. Um, obviously, you go into the year and um, injuries happen, you know, different things happen and, and uh, sometimes they'll, they'll get uh, changed up and all that kind of stuff. So it's nice to, to have some different looks and um, you know, obviously, um, as a player, you, you try to get as comfortable with uh, whoever you're playing with. And um, I feel like, uh, you know, Pools and I obviously played together early last season. Uh, I didn't feel like I was at my best when I was playing with him. Um, uh, and I, you know, he was just coming into the league. It was his first opportunity to, to really be, be a full time player and <clears throat> play against, um, you know, top lines in a lot of situations. So, you know, I feel like uh, we're both in a, a better spot. He's more experienced. The way he ended the year, he was playing awesome in the bubble for us. So, um, you know, I feel my game's, you know, uh, gone to another level, <clears throat> excuse me, as well. So, you know, I think we're both in a better spot to um, to, to, to work at it again. And, and uh, you know, again, we'll, we'll see all the different pairings and, and things will always change. But just nice to get some different looks with different guys and, and get comfortable. Next, we'll go to Ken Weeb from Sportsnet. Thanks for taking the time, Josh. Uh, you were really reflective when you came back in July. Uh, I'm just curious what the off season was like for you, and, and what was your biggest takeaway from last year, and how can you apply that into into this season? Hey, Ken. Yeah, I think um, a lot of the same. You know, just trying to uh, go to another level physically, mentally. Um, I really worked hard this off season to try to become more powerful. Um, uh, increase my strength and my fitness level and sort of go from where I was uh, in the early parts of my career to to another level um, you know as a as an athlete and and um, you know my mindset coming into this camp uh, again obviously you know you referenced the reflection I think um, had the chance to do a lot of that obviously sitting around and, and not having a whole lot to do and um, I just feel like you know, I feel really refreshed coming into the year. I feel really excited. I feel motivated and, um, you know, uh, I feel um, like I've gone to another level maturity wise uh, in, in terms of sort of athletic maturity. And, and um, even in practice, I feel like my threshold of where I can work and how hard I can work, um, I, you know, I'm trying to push that every day and uh, I really feel um, excited about that. So you know, it's, it's, uh, I'm excited to play, obviously, you know, uh, really happy that we're able to get this season going. And, um, you know, like I said, I just feel refreshed and, and, uh, I'm excited to get going. I'm still going to do, uh, Ted Wyman from the uh, Winnipeg Sun. Hey, Josh, good to see you again. Um, just interested if, when you look at the, Defense pairings as a group, there's a bit of a pattern there, it seems, with you and Tucker and Derek and Neil and then and Nathan Boyu and uh, Derek, uh, Dylan DeMello. Um, what are your thoughts on that overall configuration? Because it seems like, you know, sort of trying to get a bigger guy on each pairing. Hey, Ted. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously um, there isn't necessarily a set formula all the time. I mean, there's been some great pairings in NHL that have been, you know, both the same hand, let's say both lefties or both righties. Um, you know, I guess as you draw it up, you would maybe have a, a lefty and a righty and a puck mover and a more physical presence. I mean, you know, you're not always afforded that luxury um, and it doesn't always work. You know, sometimes, like I said, the best pairings can be, you know, maybe what you wouldn't um, in hockey 101 think to be the, the best sort of, you know, pairing and the best fit. So, you know, I, that's definitely how it's stacking up right now. Um, you know, like I said before, things will always change, but um, you know, I think it's more about whether the players complement each other. And I think, you know, the, the, the size, the handedness, whatever, the different attributes, you know, they definitely play a part in it, but it's not always, um, it's not always just as easy as that or, or it doesn't always work that way. So um, we'll see what happens as time goes on, but uh, 
you know, I like the way that um, all our defensemen have been working hard in practice to, to try to um, be ready for the season uh, when we get going. Next, we'll go to uh, Gemma Carson Smith from the uh, Canadian Press. Hi, Josh. Um, Manitoba government gave you guys the go ahead today to officially play in Winnipeg. With so much uncertainty this year and so much uncertainty around the season, what does it mean to you to be able to play in your home arena? Well, it's, I mean, we feel super fortunate, obviously, that um, the government has allowed us to play uh, here in Winnipeg. You know, it's been, um, to say it's been a tough year is a, the understatement of, you know, my lifetime, that's for sure. Um, in terms of what we've all been dealing with, you know, um, collectively, we're all in this together. And it's, it's been, it's been a challenge for everyone. So, you know, I, I think when I heard originally that um, we were going to be able to play in Canada, we weren't going to have to relocate down, you know, to the US. Um, I was really excited about that because, um, you know, I just felt like obviously staying staying in Canada and, and obviously with the hope of playing in Winnipeg and in our home cities, you know, it, it brings optimism to our communities. Um, you know, obviously we haven't had the ability to inter interact with fans at, really at all. Um, but, you know, even some of the people that I've interacted with just, um, you know, here and there over the phone, things like that, it's, you know, everyone's super excited to have hockey back. And, and so to be able to play it here in Winnipeg, our home arena, you know, we have a lot of pride to play out of our home arena and, um, you know, I just hope that we can provide uh, some excitement, something to look forward to for, you know, the people of Winnipeg, the province of Manitoba, and, you know, hopefully um, it's a sign of, of, you know, good things to come and, and that we're moving forward each day to a time when we can look back and, and move through uh, um, what's been such a challenging time. Quick follow-up from me. There are some people who say that uh, with everything that's going on in the world, the last thing we need right now is the NHL to be playing. What do you say to those people who, who kind of critique the season going ahead uh, at this point? Well, I mean, everyone's entitled to their opinion, obviously. Um, I understand and I'd be the first person to say that throughout this entire process, um, you know, hockey and, and, and being on the ice has, has really been second. Um, for me, it's been about safety. It's been about you know, um, the safety of my family, the safety of myself as an individual. And, and obviously, you know, uh, there's societal, uh, societal responsibilities that we all have, you know, um, we're all in this together, as I said before. So, you know, to somebody who says that, I mean, they're entitled to that opinion. Um, obviously, I think the keys for me in feeling good about coming back to play were you know, making sure that resources weren't going away from, you know, general society um, and, and being, you know, allocated towards professional sports that would uh, further hamper, you know, our, you know, medical system or anything like that. I think that was a huge key. But, you know, I also think that just the general optimism, you know, that I've really experienced, um, you know, I was on the phone with, I think, like Manitoba Hydro a couple of days ago. And, I got to talking about hockey with uh, the representative on the phone. And I mean, you know, just the excitement that he was sharing with me about having the Jets back and, you know, um, being able to watch us and, and, you know, talk with his friends over group texts or whatever it is about the games and have fantasy hockey and stuff like, you know, just there's so much excitement with that. So, you know, that's really what I feel is going to be the great thing to come out of us coming back is, you know, having an exciting um, time. I mean, even for me, the last few weeks watching the World Juniors, like I felt um, excited to watch that. It was exciting to, to sort of know the game was on at eight o'clock and I was checking the time to, to watch it. So, you know, that's really my goal um, as an athlete. And, and I know that that's, I think, the goal of the players as a whole is to, you know, bring some excitement and joy to, to the fans of hockey and, and the people that live in our cities that, maybe haven't been hockey fans before, but have the chance to, to watch us play. And maybe it brings some, some excitement and, and removes them from, you know, this, this horrible time we're in. So um, that's really where I stand. Thank you. Well, next with uh, Brian Munns from TSN 1290. Go ahead, Lindsay.
Josh, what's it like as the uh, top defenseman on this team, knowing that you're going to face uh, so many of the people that you know on the other Canadian teams here and, and be the number one guy each and every night? Uh, how curious are you to see how this Canadian division plays out? Well, I'm really excited to, to get playing. I mean, I'm really excited to, um, to go against some elite players. You know, I think that was really one of the things that um, I sort of – reflected on was the next step in my career is to to sort of go um to another level mentally and by that i mean competing against the best guys and and you know feeling like you belong in that conversation and wanting to to prove it you know wanting to to show your stuff and you know take on anybody in the league and 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 that's i think all the great players in our league have that mindset where you know, they want to compete against the best. And, you know, I've enjoyed that in the past, but I'm really excited this year to, to have the chance to to play against the best guys. And, you know, like you referenced in the Canadian division, there's some of the most, you know, elite um, offensive players in the world. And um, I'm just excited to have a chance to, to you know, push myself and, and um, you know, try to, again, go to a, a level that I haven't been at before in my game and, and take the next step in my career. And, um, it starts every day in practice. Um, you know, I've liked where, where my camp's been at so far. You know, feel like I'm working harder and, and able to work harder throughout the practice than I have in the past. And that's only five days. But, um, you know, if I could continue to do that, that's really my goal is every day to come to the rink, you know, with that um, athletic maturity and, and be ready to compete my hardest. So um, that's what I'm going to try to do. And, and it's going to be exciting to, to be on this stage. I think the stage of Canadian division will be a real spectacle and something that hopefully we'll never be able to experience again like this where we're playing the team so often and, and just in Canada so you know I think it's going to be a real opportunity to um, compete against the best guys and, and sort of show your stuff off and um, our team as well be you know be able to go to another level too. We'll go next to Carter Brooks from uh, Game On. Go ahead Carter. Hey Josh, I know that you uh, recently touched on this just a little bit. The World Juniors, I know, is the past participant. You must have all sorts of feelings towards this time of year. Uh, can you tell me uh, how, how the past, I don't know, Christmas, New Year's kind of went for you? Was it a cheering process? Was it observing, looking at potential teammates? Uh, any side bets you had going on? Just, just how was it for you? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it's always fun to watch. I mean, since I was a, a little kid, I remember, you know, it was like Boxing Day was almost as exciting as Christmas, you know, to be able to watch uh, the World Juniors, um, you know, realistically from the time I was, I don't know, I, I really started watching hockey with my, my dad and, and uh, my grandfather and, you know, my younger brother. So World Juniors has always been special to me and, and obviously having the chance to play in two and um, come away with the gold in, in my second opportunity, like, you know, I have so many fond memories looking back. So I'd say there was a little bit of um, nostalgia for me watching the games uh, every year, um, you know, probably looking back at old photos, you know, some um, some videos of from the games, like just some highlights and stuff. I mean, it brings back so many great memories. And, uh, you know, also watching um, watching hockey again live. I mean, we haven't had the opportunity to do that since the playoffs ended. And you know, I think just watching the games, although it's a different level, like you can sort of start to think the game a little bit and, and get your mind back into, um, you know, that hockey space. So, you know, a bunch of that, obviously a little bit of rivalries as well. You know, I was hoping for uh, Canada to pull it out, but, um, you know, obviously wasn't meant to be and, and that happened some years, but uh, just fun to watch. And, and like you said, fun to see some of the future guys as well. I thought, you know, uh, Billy and, and, and Cole really played um, great hockey and got better as the tournament went on. So exciting to see those guys doing well also. We'll go next to Tim Campbell from NHL.com. Go ahead, Tim. Josh, in, in this spectacle of a North division, who are those elite players you don't like playing against? And who are those elite players that are the toughest to play against? Well, uh, hey, Tim, thanks for a good question. Um, I mean, obviously, it's probably subjective when, you know, you, you're flat-footed and Connor McDavid's 
you know, coming down the ice. I mean, that's not really a situation that, uh, you know, when you're, when you're getting beat by them that you're too excited about, but at the same time, you know, I love playing against those guys as well and, and, you know, trying to, you know, um, shut them down or, or, or whatever it is. So, I mean, there's an abundance of them on every team now, uh, especially in the North division. I mean, you know, go through the lineup, Vancouver, Pedersen, Besser, some of these guys, Miller, you know, Edmonton, obviously Leon, Connor, Calgary, you know, Chuck and, and uh, Linholm, Monaghan, Johnny, Goudreau, like, you know, even you go east again, same thing, right? So I'm not going to go through everybody, but it's just all of these teams have elite players. And so, you know, you're going to have to be at your best every night if you want to, if you want to hang with them. Uh, just time for a few more. Uh, we'll go to uh, Jeff Hamilton for the free press. Go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Josh. Uh, just wanted to get your scouting report. I know you spent a little bit of time with them, obviously, last year, and maybe you watched them over the World Juniors, but just Bailey, just being a, a young guy and, you know, obviously you being in his shoes at one point in your career, just what you've seen from his game evolve uh, from since he's been a member of the, of the Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, I mean, I, I only watched a couple of his games, um, sort of uh, – throughout the world juniors but you know I think just obviously Billy is a very cerebral cerebral player um you know he's a, a very smart player he's a great skater and uh he makes a lot of just uh, little plays that you might not notice that um you know are really elite and not everyone can do so um I think just a general theme would be as you get older I mean he's a little bit faster a little bit stronger you know probably uh you know, a little bit more calm, even with the puck and just, you know, it, it's sort of that natural curve that uh, um, I think just comes from, you know, having the experience for him of playing some NHL games, going back, you know, to Europe, playing, playing again this year um, and just training and, and trying to work on his game. So I'm excited to see him on the ice here. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a great kid. So I'm sure that he's going to continue to develop in his game and continue to, to have that mindset, which I think is the most important thing, um, you know, when you're that age and when you're you're trying to, you know, go from from, um, you know, where he's at drafted to to being a you know an NHL player and then probably bigger goals after that. So, um, I think that's he's got all the right attributes and uh, it's fun to see him continue to get better. And we'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Josh. How have you been? Hey, Sean, pretty well, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. Um, you had mentioned a couple of times in this, con in this conversation uh, your threshold of how hard you can work, how hard you can push. You feel like you've kind of taken it to a new level. Uh, I'm sure Paul loves hearing and seeing that because he's always been big on that. And he's talked about your captain, Blake Wheeler, as that being one of his greatest virtues. What, what does it take to, to push that level to, to a place where you can kind of drive a team the way that... Uh, Blake has in the past and, and how much can you learn from a guy like Blake in getting to that stage? Well, definitely. I mean, that's something that, um, you know, obviously from the time I've been here, I've always seen with wheels and in, in practice and in, um, training camp uh, in games, you know, it's, it's not just sort of half of the practice or, you know, um, occasionally it's every single day, uh, you know, when he's tired, when he's not tired, you know, when it's an hour into the practice or the, the training camp and, and in games as well. I mean, it's always the same thing. He never comes off it. So, I mean, I think uh, I've had the opportunity to learn from him and, and, and watch his progression. Um, I think he's even gotten better at it uh, over the years because he's never satisfied. Um, I feel the same about watching a guy like Scheif, you know, and, and his progression where he can really drive and um I think you know I think the way you get there is obviously by improving your fitness improving your strength but you know mentally having that um compete level and and sort of you know pushing yourself um to a new level that you maybe didn't think you had and so that's really been my goal is I wanted to you know I've, I've always respected those guys immensely but I want to go against them in practice and push them you know um, Blake and I had a few conversations in the summer about that where I mean he's a right winger I'm a left D and we line up against one another in practice um, you know, almost every drill so if I'm you know kind of um, not playing a super you know hard on him defensively or sort of he's my friend so I don't want to be too 
aggressive, well, I'm not making him any better because, you know, the next night when he plays, you know, Ryan Suter or somebody on the left D that's, you know, going to play him tough, like, you know, he needs that preparation. And so, and obviously I need the same in return when I need to go against, you know, whoever's, uh, you know, my, my matchup. So that's really been my goal is to, to try uh, through training camp here to go against Shife, go against Wheels, go against Patty, Fly, you know, Casey, I mean, Stas. Obviously, we have an abundance of guys, but, you know, specifically those guys and, and, and try and push them and, you know, try and beat them in practice or take the puck from them. And, and uh, you know, they've done the same. And I think that's where that, a lot of that drive um, continues to be. And, and that's where you really improve. I mean, we have the luxury to, as a defenseman, to play against some of the best forwards in the world. Um, every day in practice so if you push yourself against them then you're only going to get better and there's no one else i'd rather have run the last leg of this marathon than paul edmonds from jets radio go ahead paul yep clean up better hey josh good to see you again uh thanks for taking the time today it's been lengthy i'll just kind of piggyback what uh reynolds sort of asked you as an integral part of this defensive core now you're into your fifth year as an nhler do you feel in that maturity that you spoke about already that you can make whomever you're playing with a better defenseman? Well, that's, I mean, uh, it's funny you bring that up because that's been something I've really thought about over the off season is, you know, I think um, the best players make the other players around them better. And, and that doesn't mean that you end up doing more in your role and you, you know, try and do too much and sort of always get caught in that in between, which I think I, um, was a little bit uh, guilty of last year at times, especially in the first half of the year and, and sort of trying to do more and, and getting caught in that middle ground where you're you know not doing anything or not doing your job sufficiently. And um, so I think, again, that's, that's where you can be so good at your job um, and so consistent in your reads and consistent in your compete level and your battle level and your ability, say, as a defenseman to... Um, end a play in your own end as fast as possible and, and get the puck to your partner into your forwards hands you know that's how you're making um, the players around you better so you know that's really been something that's that I've thought about a lot and, and is a goal of mine to continue to work on and improve at um, as we get into this season and as I move forward in my career.